All right, what's going on, everybody? So, um, <clears throat> who? It's gonna be a challenging one tonight. Gonna be a challenging one. So I gotta go pretty dark on this one. But let's start out with the pencil sketch here. Uh, well, I guess I'll show you guys a reference photo before I begin. Um, so we can see it's pretty dark, pretty dark. Uh, a lot of warmth. Some interesting light effects. I've never really done this in watercolor before. So it should be cool. Um, I, I painted like a candle lit still life like years and years ago, a small painting. Um, you know, in oils, or I think it was acrylics actually, and uh, it was okay, it wasn't that great, I didn't really get the candle light effect, so hopefully I can pull that off tonight. Uh, thank you, Nashia Nashia, for becoming a supporter, I greatly appreciate that. Got another green person here in the chat, <laughs> as we like to call them, but I uh, greatly appreciate it. How's everybody doing? Angela, Amanda, Joyce, Matthias, Steffi, Kim, thanks everybody for tuning in. Jess K. All right. Um, so try to, let's see, just block in this pumpkin. Looks like it goes a little more than halfway. Um, an interesting leaf down here. So what's going to be challenging is, is leaving this vine. There's a vine that kind of goes across the whole painting, which I think is really nice, actually. I really like this vine kind of leading us through and around the candles and around the painting. So if I can leave this vine in there. Sorry about this, guys. I know it's, it's very light. I know it's hard for you guys to see. But... Um, Thank you for the 99 cents. Uh, edits 60 frames per second. Greatly appreciated. Um, looks like you got rid of your message there, so I'm not sure what you said. But anyway, I appreciate the appreciate the one dollar. I wonder if I can turn this uh, into like a different mode where you guys could see the pencil better. Eh, doesn't look like it. Oh, there's black and white. Uh, Interesting. Okay, uh, just going through the different little modes on the camera there, but uh, but I'll try to get through the sketch quickly so we can just start blocking in the painting, go straight into the painting. But yeah, greatly appreciate uh, you guys becoming a member of the channel and then donating to me. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it so much. Hope you guys enjoy the content. Try to keep it interesting. Try to do different things all the time, you know. There are a certain lot, there's a certain amount of things I do like to do money. Or do money. I was reading a chat there. There's certain things I do like to do uh, often, you know, like draw animals and stuff, but I always try to mix it up a little bit. Um, so the way to donate money is you have like, a, you do a super chat or whatever. Um, it's down at the bottom. There's some button down there, I guess, at the bottom of the chat. Uh, or there's other ways you can um, support me here. If you go to my website, shaverfineart.com, I have PayPal on there. Uh, you can donate that way if that's easier for you. I have Venmo as well. I have a Patreon page. So stuff like that. But if you'd rather donate now in the chat, then you can do that. It's just a super chat is what they call it. And you can put a message with it and all that stuff if you wanted to do that. All right, so let's get these candles in here because these are really very important because it's the light of the scene, right? So I'm really hoping I can pull this painting off because this is, this is super challenging. Really hoping I can do this. Thank you for the $2, uh, Nashia. Nashia. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, I'm trying to say it correctly. Nashia. Thank you for the $2 and the little fox 
emoji thingy, I think. <laughs> Greatly appreciated. I hope I can uh, do a good painting here for you guys. Okay. Um, so I really liked this uh, this photo I found, so I thought it'd be a cool painting, especially for the season that we're in now, this kind of fall, Halloween kind of season. It kind of had that vibe. Um, so this vine actually goes behind the candle there. So like I said, I've never done this kind of lighting effect with watercolor. I mean, I've done light effects before. Obviously I've shown you guys that a little bit, different kind of light effects I can paint. So I kind of have an idea how to make these look, you know, like candles and very warm. So hopefully I can do that. Uh, that's kind of my goal here. So I'll probably leave the candle very white and then around it, I'm gonna put a lot of warmth around the candle. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm planning on, hopefully. But just gotta get this sketch in here, make sure we got all the elements looking pretty good. So I'm liking the flames, I'm liking the placement I believe, looks pretty nice, you know. We got this vine wrapping around these weaving. So the vine's gonna be tricky because it's it's light and try to leave that vine the white of the paper or a very light color. It's gonna be pretty challenging with all these dark washes I have to do. So that's gonna that's a big that's a big challenge I've been thinking about. Uh, ever since I saw this photo and I knew I was gonna paint it, it's been on my mind like how am I gonna go about that. I don't have any masking fluid or anything and I don't really, you know what I could do? I could put down a light wash and then use wax resist. Could do that. That could be something to, to play around with, but I'm not sure I want to do that. I don't know. We'll have to see. Let's we'll see what I, I try to figure out here. Worst case scenario, I have to use a little bit of gouache or opaque watercolor. That's the worst case scenario, but it's not a big deal as well. We'll just kind of see what happens here. Uh, is anyone else's screen blurry? Let me try to focus my camera. Should be good now. Hey Brandon, would you mind sharing what black and white pen you use? Uh, there's a link in the chat to the pens that I use. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Okay, cool. Um, if I missed any questions or anything, just let me know. I apologize, folks. Just been trying to trying to get this uh, sketch down. Of course, it's hard to keep up with. All the comments sometimes. So there's actually a lighter pumpkin back here, but I really don't want to. I don't want to pay too much attention to it. I mean, there's a nice like orange glow back there, which is kind of nice, but I don't want to make it too light because it just looks kind of weird to have it be like a white pumpkin. There's a bunch of vines and stuff growing everywhere and leaves, so. Those would just be abstract shapes and stuff. A lot of vines here. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to handle those with all that dark space. A lot of negative painting, which it's very challenging for me. I'm not very good at that. Um, so either I, I very carefully do really dark areas back here or 
I just go in with like opaque color later. Um, I'll have to see how this painting progresses and what kind of route I take. But my main focus is going to be the, you know, the pumpkin. And looks like the shadow is about right here. But it's cool because there's actually a shadow here for the candle. So one of the candles kind of casts a shadow, it looks like. That's kind of interesting. Hopefully I can make that look decent. So I'm kind of just sharing with you guys mentally like what I'm thinking while I'm doing this. I'm just trying to take note of certain things like, okay, that's going to be interesting. Or that's going to be challenging. Just things I have to pay attention to. So I think that's pretty good. Pretty good start. I think I'm ready to start the first wash here. Maybe make this pumpkin a little bit fatter. going on Philip thanks for tuning in am I doing this for Halloween I mean it makes sense to do it now so I'm not really doing it for Halloween I'm just I thought it was a cool photo and I was thinking of it's fall it's Halloween so I guess I kind of am doing it for Halloween I said I wasn't and I was at the same time that was kind of bizarre Okay, so just been spraying my palette real quick here. Just like to get my colors wet. I sprayed it before I started, but you know how that goes. Just dries up. So I think I'm kind of scared. I'm kind of scared how to start this thing. I think I might do a yellow ochre wash over mostly the whole thing. Uh, obviously, I think the candles, I'm going to have to be careful and leave white. Uh, yeah, the candles, those are going to be challenging too, getting that glow around them and also having it fade into the background, like transition. Uh, okay. But anyway, try to figure this out. Uh, Hmm. What's going on, Nathan? Thanks for tuning in. Don't know if I said that already. Candy, what's happening? The real Andre, what's happening? Sudin. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. And thanks for supporting the channel here. Oh, I hope I can make this a good painting. I'm very. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really nervous, but I'm. I'm. I'm just hoping I, this can. This can be good. So I think I'm going to start with like a yellow ochre wash to keep everything warm. So that's what I'm doing here. Just mixing up like, it doesn't have to be super clean. You know, it's just the first wash. Even if there's a little brown in there, transparent red oxide, doesn't matter. Just makes it a little bit warmer. So I'm just going to wash the whole painting with that. Uh, except for the light, very, very, very lightest areas that I was talking about, which is basically just the candles are white. So that's what I just have to be careful about. Since everything's going to be much darker, it's okay to just, we're going to cover all this up. I think maybe the bottom of the candles can be yellow ochre. We'll kind of fade it out as it goes up like that. Basically I want to keep it soft around the candles if I can. So what I can do is just spray a little bit there. 
part, try to soften. Keep it all soft. Like I said, never done this before, so this is this is a it's, it's an experiment for me. It's just, it's a challenge, so we'll see if I can I can go about doing this one. But already, what I'm just trying to work on is kind of the light effect already. Um, What is a wash? A uh, wash is just, uh, it's kind of like a very wet, broad area of color. You're kind of washing the paper with this color. Um, I don't know how to technically really explain it. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of a, a wash of color. Um, so this is actually Sorry, the lighting, folks. Really not that great. It's much richer in person, much more saturated. It looks very pale on uh, screen for some reason. I'll try to show you guys here, see if it looks any different. See what I'm saying? Just much, of a, much more of like a richer old yellow kind of paper. But this camera is just... Uh, I don't really have control of many of the settings. I can I can increase the exposure. That's about it. <laughs> you know, I can change the zoom really quickly. But when it comes to the colors and stuff, depending on what is on the screen, it kind of adjusts like warmer, cooler, stuff like that. It kind of self-adjusts the uh, white balance. Um, So I'm just gonna use this fan, dry it up real quick. Yeah, so a wash is just, it, it, I mean, very basic. Watercolor wash is just water pigment on the paper. Normally, usually a wash is like something that's, it's uh, usually a big area of color, you know? They don't really, they don't really use the term for smaller areas and stuff, but you know, it's just basically just painting with watercolors. So I lost, let's say I may have lost some of the white here. Maybe not. Sorry if I missed any questions. I feel like I did. Have you ever used Holbein watercolors? No, I have not. Actually, actually, I haven't technically, but, well, I have technically. So the, um, the white that I use, this white in the corner there, that's a Holbein color. So I haven't technically really used them, uh, Cubs win, but I have kind of. <laughs> Just when I use that white very sparingly. The rest of my colors are M. Graham, so it's kind of just what I've been sticking with for a while now. So my whole palette is M. Graham, except for that white. They don't have that white color in M. Graham. So the white that I use, it's called John John Brilliant. And all it is is a mixture of 
uh, I think it's titanium white and yellow ochre or Chinese white and yellow some kind of white with yellow ochre is that's the mixture I believe it's Holbein might as well double check before I say the wrong thing yeah there we go I don't know if you guys can see that probably not let's see Holbein Artist Watercolor, John Brilliant number one. And what it basically is, I don't know if it has it on here. So there's the pigment profile. You guys probably can't even see that. So the pigment profile, uh, P020, so some kind of orange pigment, I guess. P yellow 35, which is yellow, and then PW6, which is white. So I guess there's a little bit of orange in there too. I thought it was yellow ochre with white, but it's like an orange, yellow, and a white. So that's the uh, right there. But but yeah, that's the only one I've used. It's a uh, Holbein so far. The rest of all my colors are M Graham, all the same. Okay, this is pretty much dry, folks. We can move on, which is pretty scary. Uh, I'm not <laughs> Oh, gosh. I'm not sure how to tackle this thing, man. I'm not sure how to go about it, to be honest. Yeah, watercolor is pretty difficult to control, I understand. <clears throat> yeah, maybe I'll try Holbein one day. I never really th never really thought about it, but I'm, I'm up for trying it, that's for sure. Um, I think I, I th you know, uh, <laughs> so what, what I want to do, I want to keep that vine this color. So how can I do that without masking fluid? The only thing I can do is just paint around them. Oh, it's gonna be so, I think I'm gonna have to, I think I'm gonna have to opaquely, I think I'm gonna opaquely paint the vines because if I, if I try to leave the vines in there, it's gonna jeopardize the washes that I wanna do uh, and all the layers that I wanna do. And I want the pumpkin to look really smooth and nice. I want it to, and if I have to do like one section here and then a section at the bottom because of that vine, yeah, that's one thing I've learned is like if you, if you don't really want to jeopardize the washes if you can if you can you know if you can do without it. But I think I'll just opaquely paint that stuff in with that white that I just mentioned. So I think what I want to do is do another wash, possibly, and kind of keep everything really soft. Just keep building up the softness of everything because uh, it gets very dark. Or do I just go very dark and just start doing it? Do I just do it? What do I do? Oh man. Sorry folks, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to approach this thing. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really want to use wax resist because it, it'll have this texture that I don't really want for this vine. The vine's very smooth and uh, and, and if there's an area where the wax resist doesn't really work that well, it's going to mess up. And I think I just go for it. I think I just go for it. Let's see. Uh, so yeah, let's just, let's just go for this. So I said this a million times for all the viewers that follow me. So I'm gonna mix transparent red oxide with ultramarine blue. <laughs> so this gets you a really nice dark. You can basically mix black with it. You can or about you can basically mix black with those two colors. But I can lean it to warm or cool if I want. So there, there's kind of a a gray. I can make it a little bit warmer. 
And for the darks in this, the really dark darks, I want them to be warm. I can even go, I can even mix a little bit of, uh, of this purple color. And this purple is a uh, ultramarine violet deep. So it's just like a nice purple. It's not as strong pigmented as ultramarine blue and stuff, but it still has a nice, has a nice rich tone to it. I like it. I like the, I like the kind of tone, the way it mixes with colors. Uh, yeah, Matthias knows that one. Ultramarine blue and transparent red oxide. So I think, I think I'm just going to try to go for it. I mean, I'm going to have to do many layers, I think, here to get it dark, but I think I just try to go very, very dark or, or kind of dark right now because my tendency is to not go dark enough. So I know if I just try to See, I tried to go dark and it's not even that dark. So I think what I can do, we'll just keep it, we'll just keep this layer dark like this. And I wanna spray this cause I don't want that to be so hard. I'm gonna try to keep things soft right now. I'm gonna have to paint pretty quickly right now. I'm just, like I said, getting in another wash here. So I'm just using the spray bottle with water. And what that does is just softens things. It's very subtle, keeps it soft and moving kind of, keeps the wash wet. And the reason I want that is because I want to mix up an orange now. A red orange. I want to try to get into this other side of this pumpkin. I'm probably getting way ahead of myself, but Like I said, I want to try to, I'm going to keep all this soft. So it should be okay, hopefully. If not, then we're going to have, eh, we'll just have a crappy painting, I guess. <laughs> no big deal. Can't win them all, right? So we'll try. We'll definitely try. I just kind of wanted to be bold. Just go for it. I'm just adding like little bits of red in here because it, it needs to be just different different colors going on. You know, different. We need some reds, we need some golds, we need some oranges. Softness, try to keep this soft.
So it probably looks really crazy right now, which uh, kind of is. But I just needed a little bit of something to get me started. And then, uh, you know, this is going to dry much lighter. I already know because I used a lot of water. And it's actually much lighter than it looks. It's very hard to get the colors and the exposure to look good on this camera, unfortunately. Maybe one day I can upgrade to something. But for now, this is what I have to work with. So just try to make the best of it here, folks. And uh, I'll post a photo of this finished painting later if it's good enough. If it's not a disaster. Sorry folks if I missed anything in the chat right now, I just trying to stay focused here, trying to stay focused. Yes, watercolors do dry lighter. I'm just afraid at this very early stage, I'm afraid to go too dark. I just want to kind of build up if I can. But you're right, they do dry lighter. Depends on how much water you use. More water is less pigment, less water is more pigment. So that's just science. I'm still avoiding these candles. I'm not really sure how to get that light effect, but um, you know, maybe it's something I should practice first. I guess it's a little too late for that, huh? See, I don't want I don't want brown around these candles. That's the problem. Luckily, it's still very light, so I have a lot. I can still work with this. By the way, this color is much warmer than it looks on the screen. I can tell you that, at least. Much, much warmer. Soften. Really soften this. Soften this. Soften everything, keep it soft for now. I should have uh, should have looked at some other paintings of candles before I started this. Forgot to do that. Actually, you know one thing I could do actually? I have a candle right behind me on the floor. I should light that candle and see what it looks like from life. Imagine that. That's an idea. I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna let this let this dry a bit. I got too much water here, it's all like puddling up.
Oh, here we go, folks. Let's see what let's see what happens here. So we have have a candle flame. It's crackling. So it's very orange, but I don't want to paint like that, obviously. Blue at the bottom, so a little bit of blue would be nice, I think, just to give it that candle appearance. Um, looks like it's lightest around the middle a bit, but I, I'm gonna have to paint it similar to a sun. Similar to the way I paint a sunset and stuff, like there's gonna be a glow around the candle that kind of gives off the warmth of it. Sorry about all these washes, folks, and having to wait for it to dry, but it just seemed the right way to approach this one right now, um, at this moment. I'm gonna get more, we'll go in with more detail and stuff soon. Um, yeah, I know it's different. I know my candle's not in the dark. I thought about that already, but it's still a flame. Actually, my, my computer has a back black back uh, part of the screen is black it's still it's still different even observing it from life it's different than the way I'm gonna, that you have to paint it to make it look you know and the way it's like when you paint sunsets like if you painted what you saw like usually the sun looks super orange but if you paint the sun saturated orange you're gonna lose it because it's not the sun is actually a very, very bright value, so you have to use the light, white of the paper as the sun. So it's challenging, it's definitely challenging. So the way you see it is not exactly how you have to paint it, it's kind of different. So it's, it's tricky, it's very tricky. So I think maybe what I'll tackle next is the candle area, because that's really one of the main focal points. So I think I'll, I'll tackle the light effect, try to get that down as best I can, and then we'll focus on the pumpkin and, and more of the darkness. All right, folks, we're getting there, almost dry, almost dry. I don't know why this camera, it makes everything look so much cooler. It's, it's, it's much warm, much, much warm over here. But, oh well, I complain about that every time. It's just, it's very annoying. I wish you guys could see what it looked like a little bit better, you know? I wish I could somehow increase the warmth or saturation or something. But I would need a better live stream camera. And this one's, I got this one for free from a company and it's very good little document camera. So it works, gets the job done. It's easy setup, easy to zoom in very quickly when I'm drawing and stuff and details. So I'm very grateful that I have it, but you know, I just wish the color was a bit better for these paintings. Okay, almost dry, almost dry. Thanks for staying, sticking, sticking with me here, folks. I definitely appreciate it. Hopefully try to make this one a good one. Need to inject a lot more warmth into this one. I think some cools are gonna be crucial though. I think some cool uh, blues and stuff, I think are definitely gonna be crucial to making the warms look very warm. Um, 
No, I can't adjust the camera. There's not, I don't have any settings. It's basically, a, you plug it in and it just works through the, through the way I'm streaming. I, I don't have any ability to mess with the settings, unfortunately. So, it's kind of a bummer. Okay, try enough to continue. I think, surprisingly, I might use a smaller brush now. So I still got this candle going here. What's in, what's what's good about having this candle here? I don't know. If you, let's see if it shows it on the. Eh, it's very hard to see it on this camera. But what it shows is like even on my webcam, it's hard to tell. It looks, just looks so bright. It shows the nice warm reflected light on the actual part of the candle. You know, see how it's like warm reds and oranges here. Um, so that's the important part that I'm noticing. The flame itself, I know it's just gonna, it's gonna have to be very bright. So I think uh, I think I got this. I think I got this, folks. So let's see, smaller brush. Okay, um, so for the light effect here, I like the, I like the light kind of yellows and war oranges, warms I have around it. So I think from there, we're gonna have to put like some oranges and oranges and reds, red oranges. So this is a, uh, this is the part I'm concerned about, a little concerned. And I kind of have to keep it pretty soft and I'm gonna try to have to blend it out. So, hmm. And I know the candle is gonna have to be much warmer. This one especially, it's reflecting the pumpkin. So, there's a lot, of, a lot of work to do here. A lot of work to do here. I should just gotta get into it, try to see what I can do here. going on Joel sorry to hear you have to do some homework that's a bummer hope it goes well you can always watch this later yeah I know how that is so many things to do in life I understand I think most of us do like I said I really have no idea what I'm doing I'm just Luckily, I'm experimenting on this one candle. If it doesn't work out, then I can try something else on another candle. It's going to look weird right now, but... So now I'm just cleaning my brush. And what I'm doing is just, like, trying to soften that edge. A bit. Soften the whole thing. Oh boy, this is tough. Especially, it just looks horrible on the camera. I apologize, folks. Um, oh boy, this is not looking the way I want. Oh 
Hmm. Oh. Let's see. And there's somebody who painted a candle. Hmm. I don't remember his name. That's a bummer. Yeah, I feel like I need, I need to figure this out. I'm trying to find some quick inspiration on Instagram to see if I'm having some trouble here, folks. I just want to. Hmm, okay. Hmm, I think, I think I'm on the right path. I think I need, I think the problem is, need some more darkness, need more darkness. I think I'm on the right path here. It's just, all of it's very light still. So what I think I need to do is I need to take a different approach, different approach. I think I need to darken the rest of it and still leave that kind of, that effect, that light effect. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to do, see if I can do like a very, very, I'm gonna do like a light blue under here. That's not the right kind of blue. I need like ultramarine, ultramarine blue. I thought a teal would look good, but nope, 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 nope. I need ultramarine blue. soft and light for now. And what it needs is the wick. It needs the wick to make it. Yeah, yeah, the wick on here. I know I'm worrying about details that don't really matter right now, but I should be doing the rest of the painting. But I, I wanna get in this focal area I always try to find a way. I always try to find a way. I don't know. Why would you watch this, Stacy? What's happening? What's going on? <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if I can pull this together.
So I know this looks very dark right now, but I think all the darks that are gonna come around it are gonna help light, make it look much, much lighter. That's my hope, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, I don't know what my, uh, I'm glad people are fascinated by my thought process because my thought process is like basically just panic. I'm trying to figure out how to go about this painting because it's, it's, it's not the typical watercolor painting I'm used to doing, you know. Something very dark like this with an interesting light, it, you know, you got to be very careful about everything and I don't like being careful, really. <laughs> it's annoying. It's too much work. I like just having fun and, and... So we see already I'm getting more of a light effect just by darkening, warmening, 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 warming, I warmeninged up the, the stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry folks, I don't know how to talk. My brain is fried from all this warmening up. Um, I put some cools down here at the bottom and then we have it goes up to warm and then up to very very light so I'm hoping that'll work in my favor later on when I start adding the background I think the background is going to reveal the light effect here so I'm telling you on, on this camera it looks so cool for some reason and not warm I'll show you I'll try to show you guys here let's just keep going <laughs> I gotta just keep going because I, hopefully I can bring this thing to life because it just doesn't look that great right now, but I promise, I promise I'm gonna do my best to, we'll keep, the, we'll make this thing look good. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, that's a good point, Matthias. He says, yeah, panic is good because it makes you look for solutions quickly like a race against the time. Yeah, and that's, um, Yeah, exactly. I do that when I plain when I go out painting in, in plain air. Like everything is it's so quick, so fast, and I have to just you know, figure out like what to do before all the light just disappears on me. Okay, I think I need to what do I need to do? What do I need to do, Brandon? What do I need to do? I think we do work on this these pumpkins and stuff more. You know, we got the candles a little bit more now, so I think we, we hit this pumpkin again hit this pumpkin. Um, I'm gonna get some kind of nice orange, dark orange color. And we'll just see, let's just, let's just do it. I think we need to go darker. I'm gonna mix some purple into that. Maybe more red, it needs to be warmer. Transparent red oxide, cadmium red. Cadmium red, cadmium red. There we go. Any warmth. There's a little bit of like reflected light here, but I'm just gonna ignore that because ain't nobody got time for that, you know what I'm saying? Okay, 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 let's go, let's go. Let's go, Brandon, we got this, we got this. So I'm just trying to get, I'm trying to get the right values in here, finally. You know, I'm trying to build up, trying to build up something. Problem is, I want the edges to be soft. And that's difficult, it's so difficult. If you guys haven't noticed yet. Just in case you haven't noticed. So 
I'm going with almost just straight cadmium red right here. Just trying to get very hot, very warm. Right before it turns into shadow. It's very hot, very warm there. Now I'm going to start adding more like yellow ochre into it. Trying not to like outline the whole thing. Yeah, I don't really want to like, I don't want to have like outlines. Like, we need more red over here. Hey, what's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in. We're having a struggle here tonight, but it's all right. We'll just keep going. I think it's all going to blend nicely. It's going to, we're going to, we'll get there. We'll get there. Slowly but surely, folks. This was, this is going to come together. I have faith, I think. Have faith in this. We can do this. We can do this. Just got to do one little, one little thing at a time, you know? There's only so much you can paint at one time. So we just, just keep going. So there's a pumpkin back here. This is what I'm afraid of. This is the part that I'm afraid of. But I know it's dark. Like I said, I don't want to outline it. But when it gets around that candle, that's when I'm like, get a little concerned. Ah, brush is too dirty. I was trying to clean it off. I was trying to get some of this water off. I had a dirty brush. Okay, not bad, not bad. We're still doing okay. Might be the most challenging watercolor I've ever tried to do, that's for sure. It's just, uh, there's so many little parts that all get connected and, and I'm not really doing a very good job at doing this one. Not very well. But I'm trying folks, I'm really trying.
going on SFS Eagle it's good to see you here it's been a while Okay, okay. I feel like I just need to go dark and stop playing around, you know? Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm done. I'm tired of this. It's already been one hour in. I gotta get serious. Let's just, let's get some pigment here. Let's get some paint and some pigment. Let's start painting, you know what I mean? Done, just done. I'm just, I'm really done. So you guys see what I've been leaving on the table here as far as value? That's what I've been talking about. You know, once I put these darks in, everything changes. The game changes. It's a different game I'm playing. I'm just, I always am too afraid to go too dark too quickly, but I'm tired. I'm tired of doing it. Let's just get in there. I'm not gonna remember that. A axolato, axolato. I'm gonna have to remember that. I wanna look that up, but I'm not gonna remember that. Thanks for the suggestion though, uh, SFS Eagle. I'm gonna try to remember that one. It's very unique, so hopefully I can. Look how light that pumpkin looks now. Doesn't look as dark as it should be, huh? Even though I probably thought it was already dark enough. Let's try to lose some of these edges here because I don't like when I do too much like that. Too many hard edges and stuff. But I'm just going to try to be bold now, you know? Like, it's too timid in the beginning. And I don't want to be like that. I want to be, let's get serious about what's happening here. This is serious business. <laughs> yeah, should have done this like half an hour ago. Oh, that sounds cool, uh, Zoe, Zoe, Abundant. Glad to hear that. Thanks, Cubs win. I appreciate it. I always, I try, man. I try to, I try to do my best. It's hard. It's hard to keep you guys engaged and respond to you guys and do all this but I just do my best that's all I can do do my best some people are gonna get bored and go away but whatever you know I just gotta gotta do what I do here no matter what just have some fun a disaster so let's try to keep this soft where it needs to be I wasn't really done with the darks yet 
But that's the thing, like everything connects to something, so it's, it's hard to to stop at one part and, you know, continue on another part and all this stuff. There's a leaf here, I don't even know if I should leave that out, I should just paint over that. I'll paint it back in opaquely if I want. Just get rid of that. So you see how I, I had those hard edges there and I tried to just I try to just smudge it a bit. What that does is just gets it creates a little more interest, you know. I don't need too many hard edges everywhere. Um, at least not yet. Although it depends on the painting. Sometimes I don't care about it and I'll have hard edges everywhere. You know, it just depends. Depends on the Time and place. Let's try to get more warms and stuff in here. Like random reds and things. I want to try to vary the color a bit rather than just all this brown that I already put down. I remember how dark those candles looked. Look how light they are now. You know. That's the thing, man. It's just get it's way it's way different than you think once you put it down, especially when it dries and you haven't reached your full value of dark that you want to go. You know, people think like, wow, that looks way too dark or something, but no, it's not. It wasn't. Didn't even get to where I wanted yet, you know. But this is what I was talking about earlier, like these darks are gonna make the candles look like they're glowing. Like, that's what I wanted. That's what I was like looking for earlier. But thanks, uh, fake news, appreciate it. They said it's coming out real nice, so thanks. I've been working on it for an hour now, so I'm glad it's coming out nice, because <laughs> uh, I hate to spend an hour and then it doesn't turn out nice, you know, turns out law or whatever but I'm trying I'm really trying here folks thanks everybody for tuning in glad to see a bunch of new viewers every day now all the time got a bunch more viewers than we used to got like four times more viewers than we used to so thank you everybody for tuning in watching supporting the channel we got some donations earlier from a few people somebody became a member so all kinds of things happening here, man, and I appreciate every single one of you guys tune in, watch every day, hang out with me, and uh, keep me on my toes, you know, keep me, keep me sharp here, because I gotta keep trying, trying new things. Let's go a bit darker here. So what I just did was bad. So you see those strokes, how they're evenly placed? Bad, don't wanna do that. Definitely don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna to try to get rid of. And actually you don't want it to be too dark really because uh, when you have something that's, that's kind of dark but still has room to go darker, it actually shows like a bit of atmosphere. You know, if, if something is solid black, it's like there's no atmosphere. So I like to have, now that I'm thinking about it and actually paying attention to what I'm doing, I do like to have it be not super dark, but some areas can be really dark where needed. But if you have a little bit of atmosphere in there, uh, it can be pretty nice, especially with something like this, where it's kind of Mysterious in a way. So I'm trying to be bold with my strokes, just be very deliberate with what I'm doing. So this is this is the part I've been dreading this whole time is getting around these candles. <laughs> and I think I have to go red right around these candles, like orange, red, orange, to really get that the warm effect that I'm looking for. 
<laughs> so, uh, yeah, stro I'm, 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 yeah, trying to figure this out. Kind of reinstate some of those wick, some of the wicks there. See this hard edge, I really don't like that, but a little spray of water can help that. But like I said, I don't like getting too detailed or worrying about it too much, so just try to be bold here, keep it dark, keep it warm and dark. <clears throat> Sorry if I'm missing any question, folks. Um, you want to do sketching, but your sketching is not going perfect. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, nothing's going, nothing goes perfect. So I think you're expecting too much. My painting's not going perfect, but you know, you got to just do it no matter, nothing will ever be perfect. So don't worry about that. Just do the best you can and just keep going. Keep practicing, keep it up. Cause what else are you going to do? You could do, try to do something else. But if you really love sketching and drawing, then just keep going. Um, okay. Let's try to get a little bit cooler up here, just so that it, it pushes the warms a bit more. So how to make your warms warmer? You make them, you make your cools cooler. So we can add some, introduce some cool up here slightly. We'll have some cool on this candle down here. That's a bit dark now that I'm looking at that. Yeah, these are supposed to be white candles, so I don't want them to be too dark. I think I already went too dark here. Kind of ruined that effect I had. Not bad though, not bad. Okay, um, gotta be careful here, gotta be careful. This is very challenging, folks. This is like, whew, boy, this is tough. This is a tough one. I really didn't think it was gonna be this tough for some reason, I don't know why. I mean, I see the photo, I, th I should have known like how difficult this was gonna be. I always underestimate, I always overestimate my abilities <laughs> and underestimate like the challenge that it's going to bring. But I guess that's good in a way because it helps me uh, stay humble and um, do challenging things like this that I probably would have never <laughs> otherwise have done. Are you doing pumpkin in background? Eh, I don't really know. It's kind of just a, it's kind of just gonna be a value now, you know? It's kind of like, I'm not really sure what's going on back there, to be honest. I'm, I'm really focused on the uh, candles right now. Uh, but what I can do to bring, if I wanna bring out that shape, it's really the bottom edge right here that needs to come out. So just having a darker line right there, um, you know, like like a bit of darkness under here, having it come up to try to reveal that 
shape of that thing back there. Does that make sense? So that's that's really the only thing I can kind of do to bring that out. And I, I was going to get to that eventually, but now is the time, I guess. Now is the time. And we'll have some leaves and stuff over top. There are some darker vines, so I could try to put in some of that softly here for now. Thanks, Lee. I appreciate that. Appreciate the kind words. Hope you're doing well, man. So I'm trying to put a little bit more red back here. I know it probably looks horrendous on the camera there, folks, but uh, this is looking it's looking pretty good here on the uh, on the eyes, on the real eyes. Um, you know, some other things that need work, you know, I'm not really, I don't really like this whole outline around the pumpkin. So I know there's going to be like leaves and stuff over here, so I'll try to break up this edge a little bit there. Enrique, thank you for the donation, man. Ten, uh, whatever currency that is, greatly appreciate it. I think it's about like two bucks or something like that, a little bit more than that. So, greatly appreciate that, Enrique. Hope you're doing well. I kind of lost the impression of that pumpkin, so I'm gonna have to wait till it dries and then uh, kind of reinstate that a bit more. So what I'm losing here now is kind of some of the light on this candlelight here. It's getting a little too sharp and weird looking. Yes, I don't know why I'm using this big brush. I just, I like using it. It feels nice. I can do big areas like that very quickly without having to kind of switch modes from paintbrush to paintbrush, so I kind of just, I get used to using this big brush even for small things. So that's just how I work. This candle here. I'm afraid to do what I'm about to do, but I'm gonna try it. I think underneath the candle needs to have warmth. Does that ruin the effect? Or does that help it? I think that helps it. Because that's what I observe in real life, actually. It's like warmer underneath the candle. There, I think that helps, actually. It's like this golden. See so this golden color underneath the candle? And that, that gives the effect of like temperature. I think that's why that's kind of needed. This is, this is tough, this is tough. 
We haven't even put the vines in there. I think it's going to need more stuff, you know. It's going to need more little leaves, you know, little crunchy leaves everywhere. The vines, when I draw those in, I think it'll bring everything together. But, you know, we're, we're still, we're probably three-fourths of the way done now, you know. I got to do a little bit more of this background, uh, a little more down here maybe. This side's pretty dark, pretty nice, so I just need to kind of match that over here. But I need to dry all this, I think. Kind of get us to a point, give me a little break and uh, get me to a point where everything's dry. Um, did I go to art school? I, um, I, went, I didn't go to art school, I went to school for graphic design. And I kind of picked up painting on my own. Do I ever use colored pencils? No, I cannot stand colored pencils. It's just personal preference. I just, I don't like colored pencils. Um, uh, that's a good question, Sue Dean. She says, if you were to start this painting over, Brandon, what would you have done differently? I think I would have... I would have gone darker sooner and I would have just gone for it, you know, rather than like being so meticulous at the beginning, like, oh, we'll do a little wash here and a little wash there. And I think I would have just, I would have just gone with it and just jumped right into it. Been more bold about it. Yeah, I don't, I don't like colored pencils. I, I don't like the feel of them. I don't like how long it takes to get color because if I'm sitting there doing colored pencils, it's just like, I'd rather be painting, you know? And, oh, JSA drawing. It's good to see you back too, man. Your, your drawings are really good, actually, by the way. You do like hyper realism with colored pencils and stuff. I saw a few of your videos. Really great work, man. Keep it up. You only have like three or four videos on your channel, so just keep going, man. You, you'll get some traction eventually. Just keep doing. You're doing pretty well for being so young. It's not really the kind of art that I personally like to create, but I appreciate other people creating like that kind of stuff. So definitely great work. Keep it up. But um, yeah, I'm just not a fan of color pencils. You know, I don't know. I mean, I think other people can make amazing things with them, but for me personally, it's just not something I like to use. I think even this pumpkin right here will probably will probably glaze that, and that'll give it more of a rich color. I mean, if you compare it to the photo right here, I mean, that photo, it's much more orange, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Even back here. So now that this is drying, we're kind of seeing what it's... You know, it's getting lighter and lighter, so. Uh, seeing what the real values are here. Yeah, exactly. Just more, more and more content. You know, if you put out really good content, people will come. People, people will find you. But... Do you play Among Us, Brandon? Uh, I don't know what that is, so no, I don't. <laughs> I do not. Right, I think we're almost dry here, folks. Okay, okay, okay. Now we're kind of seeing what's happening with this thing. So, okay. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for sticking with me. Whoever has been here from the beginning. Okay, this is still a little damp, but it's not. Not worried. Not worried. Okay, don't need the candle anymore. So, I feel okay about the candles. Um,. Like I said, I think I still need a little bit of warmth there. Probably add more, I 
I think I need that um, that blue added in back in there. A bit more strongly now. Let's try to do that. See, and the cool of this flame actually makes everything around it look more warm, too. Or the warms of the flame make this blue part look cooler. It's probably a bit too dark trying to lighten this up. It's hard to get like a light blue like that that I want. Oh well, okay, looks good enough. Good enough. Um, you know what? I think uh, I think I want just a little more warmth. Under these candles. I wish you guys could see the color on this thing. Okay. Yeah, so when I put the fan up, it brings out more of the real color. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, this camera, it's very hard to see. I'll try to show you guys real quick on this. It's not much better, but... Yeah. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll post the, um... I'll post the final painting on, like, the YouTube community tab on my page. Okay, uh, and it'll be the thumbnail of the video afterwards, so you guys can be able to see it. Um, oh, guys, this one's this one's really challenged. I knew this was gonna take a while. What do I do now? <sighs> I'm getting. I'm feeling like fatigued from doing this one.
So this is kind of just like a glaze of like cadmium red. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Sorry I've been a little quiet right now. I'm just trying to focus, you know, trying to bring this thing together um, at the moment. Because it's already been an hour and 35 minutes, so, you know, I kind of want to finish this thing up and call it a night, you know. Try to get this thing done.
kind of made that pumpkin in the background like a normal pumpkin, so big deal. No big deal, basically. experimenting a little bit there didn't really don't really like what happened <clears throat> okay, 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 okay. This one's come a long way. It's definitely come a long way. Feeling, feeling okay about it, I think. <clears throat> feeling okay about it.
Yeah, definitely spend a lot more time on this one than I normally do with uh, these paintings. This one definitely needed much more patience, much more attention. I don't want everything to be too straight, you know? I want things to look interesting. <clears throat> Thank you, Roseanne, for the five dollars. Greatly appreciated. She says, uh, love how humble you are. Thanks. I appreciate that. I try to be. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate that. Just doing my best here, you know. That's all I can do every night when I get on these streams Monday through Friday. You know, I just try to create a good painting or a good drawing. Sometimes they take a little longer. Sometimes I, I struggle. Sometimes they suck. <laughs> sometimes they're awesome. You know, just, you know, last week I did a really, I thought I did a really awesome painting. And then this week, you know, I'm just... I feel like I'm struggling a bit with this one, but it's not a big deal. We just try to work through it. I struggled yesterday with the drawing, but I still just try to work through it a bit. Ooh, didn't mean to do that. I was trying to do this, maybe this, but did not mean to do that one. Just trying to really push the warms if I can. <clears throat> What's going on, No No? Good to see you here. All right. <clears throat> I think once I start out in these vines, I think I think. I think we'll be good. I, I'm, 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 I'm debating on if I should go darker or not. It looks very messy right now. I didn't get a lot of clean washes that I normally get, unfortunately. So it doesn't look very good. <clears throat> you know, it's very, it's not very uniform, which is okay. I mean, I, I think. You know what it's missing? It needs some splatters. You know what I'm saying? I think it needs some splattering. <clears throat> I'm doing all right, I'm doing all right. I'm just struggling a bit here tonight. Uh, struggled a bit yesterday, but I'm okay. I'm happy with how this is coming out. You know, it's it's come a long way. If you watch the replay, it's, it's uh, started off as a pretty big struggle. It's still a bit of a struggle here. But the lighting, I'm happy with the lighting. It looks pretty good. Um, I still feel like I can go warmer in some places. So I'm trying to determine, you know, I don't want to go too dark on these candles. I feel like I already went too dark on them, but yeah. What color is the orange? Well, a lot of different colors. Uh, there's cadmium red in here, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and transparent red oxide. It's kind of like a mixture, you know, more yellow ochre here, more cadmium red, transparent red oxide, uh, a little bit of Indian yellow between these. So um, it's kind of a difference. What I just put on these candles right here, that was cadmium red, like a wash of that with a little bit of yellow ochre. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for being patient with me. Letting this thing dry. I 
Yeah, well, part of, the, part of the problem is this camera doesn't really show you how warm it actually looks. You know, it's, it's kind of close, it's pretty close, but it's a little more saturated in real life. You know, it's just different when you see it in, in person. It's hard to get the right colors on this, this camera, unfortunately. So they are a bit warmer. Everything is a bit warmer than it actually looks. Like these darks are warmer, pumpkins warmer, the candles are warmer. But yeah, I think maybe like a light glaze of red over that whole thing might might be pretty helpful actually. So I kind of I kind of been very timid with this painting compared to other ones, but I think it's because I'm, I'm this is something very new to me. I I, I don't really <laughs> never painted anything like this before, so. Yeah, there we go. Just a bit more golden, red, oranges in there. Yeah, I've never painted anything like the, this lighting scenario, this dark. Uh, it's just, it's very challenging. It's been a challenge the whole time. So I kind of like that. I kind of like, I like that. It's a bit nice. You know, I, I really need to stop referring to the photo and just like, really figure out what does the painting need now itself and not worry about the photo. That's what mistake I always make. I try to make it look exactly like the photo sometimes. I'm like, it's not the reason why I'm painting it. You know, I don't need it to look just like the photo. I need it to look interesting. You know, what's going to make this thing appealing when the photo is not around? Nobody's going to know the photo. Uh, when I just show the painting, you know. So, it's one of those things, one of those things. Let's see if I can do, I don't know if I can do a glaze around. I'm trying to do like a warm reddish golden glaze. But not really a glaze, just a wash. But just trying to add more warmth around these candles a bit. More atmosphere, more light. Alright, I think uh, I think it's good good for now. Let me step back for like one second here, ten seconds. I need to see this from just a different view, a different vantage point. Very, it's very different, different than most paintings I've done, that's for sure. I think what I'm gonna do... You know, this, I think this painting just calls for... some splattering like this. It just needs a little bit of... It's missing this kind of like texture aspect that I normally put in my some of my paintings and once I'm gonna put these vines in here soon and I think that'll help too we'll put in like some leaves and stuff I think that'll bring everything together but we definitely need like we need some splattering going on here we need some texture we need some
a lot of this will fade out anyway or get covered up. And you have any tips for art uh yeah just keep going keep keep arting every day all right um let's um let's uh, where's my smaller brush where to go here we go let's try to do let's try to do some like uh vines and stuff and leaves and all kinds of stuff i think that's i think it's time for that so what I'm trying to do is just use a little bit of water, but get like a thick mixture of this white. But I think I'm gonna have to mix it with like some orange, maybe like yellow ochre. It's gonna dry darker anyway. But a bit of cadmium red maybe. We'll see what this looks like. Yeah, maybe transparent red oxide. See what this looks like on the painting. Might have to be lighter. Or dark, actually, maybe not. We want it to be darker as it gets over here, but lighter as it gets in the light, but let's just start like right here. Oh yeah, that was a good decision. That was a good decision. Wanted to paint these opaquely in there. So it's pretty bright, it's pretty bright. I might have to go darker over it in some areas or more red. Cause it actually gets, it is a bit darker. And like more of like a warm glow. Like back here it kind of gets like a warm red. It's kind of hard to see that for you folks, but. Let's see, let's just do transparent red oxide.
right, folks, getting close to wrapping this one up. We're just trying to trying to make it interesting here. Trying to bring this one together. Uh, see how it kind of gives it more atmosphere like the um, Could vine could maybe vines could maybe create vines by scraping uh, Possibly yeah, I'm a little afraid to do that, but um, Hmm like I wonder if I could use the back of my brush Yeah, can't really I think I'd have to do that while it's like while the painting was wet I don't know. I don't I've seen some people do that kind of thing, but I don't have much experience doing that, so I don't know. But So I'm just trying to keep the lightest areas like around the middle, middle of the painting here, and like make them like darker or more red as they go away from the center. That's kind of what I'm trying to like, trying to do. And I'll put some darker ones up here as well, like some darker vines. Thank you, Kathy, for becoming a supporter, a member of the family. You're now a green person in the chat. Pretty cool, I appreciate it. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. So to become a member, you just click the join button on my channel under the, near the subscribe button. It's only $1.99 a month, I believe, or $2.99, can't remember. Uh, not very expensive, but it's just a way to support me if you're able to do that, or if you don't want to, no, no worries. But for the people that want to, it's there, and I uh, greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. You make all these videos and things possible. Gives me a little motivation. Lets me buy new paint, new pens, paper, all kinds of things for this channel. So, greatly appreciate it. And I'm able to just share what I do here with everybody and hopefully people learn from it and you know, get inspired to make their own things and do whatever, you know. I'm trying to make it darker back there, but it's still, it's like pure transparent red oxide. Almost. It's very light. Yeah, this is definitely a challenging painting. I've never done anything like this one. I, I don't know, man. I'm going to stick to some lighter subjects, not do something so dark. <laughs> this was definitely a challenge. Um, so I think, I think the vines for now are okay. I think maybe I'll do some darker vines real quick, like up here, maybe around other areas a bit. We'll do like some really dark vines. See what that looks like. Just to have like a variety of different values of vines, light and dark.
Okay, okay. And there's a lot of leaves and stuff, so maybe I'll put like some like just some abstract kind of shapes. Like this will actually add some texture to the painting as well. So that's kind of what I want to do. I do want some I was talking about that earlier, you know, adding like some of these texture in here. So this is a great opportunity to do that. So I'm trying to get like more dry brushing, more dry brushing effects with a lot of this. And one way to do that is just move the brush really quickly and lightly over the paper and you let the, the paper kind of, uh, you know, the texture of the paper do the, the magic, so to speak, you know. I'm gonna try to, we'll kind of echo some of these leaves like, um, you know, around the rest of the painting as well, just so it kind of harmonizes a bit more. Cause this pumpkin, it doesn't look like it's really sitting anywhere, you know, it just looks like it's floating. And I think part of it's the bottom's not dark enough and everything, but you know, what am I gonna do? Um, so if I can kind of bring in some leaf shapes and stuff, we can maybe obscure some of that a bit or something. I don't know. I don't know. Don't want anything looking too perfect, you know. Don't want anything looking too perfect, you know. Just want to look natural. You know, things growing, things happening, little dots and Textural things. <clears throat> this part is a little bit bare up here, so I'll try to put like We'll put some other vine, like those dark vines I was talking about, some of those. Kind of 
kind of weave through the painting a bit. Maybe in front of one of the candles like this. I think it's coming to life, you know? I think that's it's what was missing was the environment, you know? The candles and the pumpkin, like all that needed to be in like an environment. Um, the only other thing I can do real quickly, it's kind of crazy to do it right now, but um, I just feel like it needs it. <laughs> I don't know why I try to do this stuff. Let's see, all right, we're two hours in, so I'm gonna end this one very soon. But one last thing I want to try to do is just very lightly glaze some of this. More of a deeper red color. More rich in the background there. Same with this pumpkin. It's probably hard to see it on the camera, but it definitely makes a difference here where I'm seeing it. Um, and I think that pretty much finished it. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of blue at the top there, so that kind of helps too, you know. Um, there's a little bit of blue on these candles and stuff, so. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, am I, do I want to call this one done right now? I feel like I should take the tape off a bit. Actually, really quickly, remember all the splatters I put in there? They're completely gone already, so. <laughs> We'll just try to bring a little bit of that back real quick. Some dark splatters. And um, that'll just finish up painting here and the texture. It's kind of what I'm looking for. I just like doing the, I like the splatters, you know. It feels good to me, it feels right, it looks nice. Gives it a nice texture. Okay. I think we take the tape off and uh, see what we're working with here. All right, I think that's, I think that's pretty much what we do. Oh, don't get too thick here. I just want a little bit of light on top of the darks that I put in, like these dark leaves and stuff. And that way it just it gives a little bit more depth. A little bit more depth. Um, anyway. Okay. Now nah, we're good. Right, let's take the tape off. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm actually surprised how this one turned out. Are you guys are you guys surprised how how this one turned out? Let me know in the chat. I want to know if you guys are surprised or not how this one came out. If you guys saw this at the beginning, if anybody was here at the beginning and now it sees now, like 
Um, do I ever use a toothbrush for splattering? No, I don't, but that's a good idea, actually. I always use this brush for splattering mostly, this big one, because I know how to control it. I know exactly like kind of where it's going to go most of the time. I, I've tried splattering in the past with like a smaller brush, and it's always it's less predictable because I haven't used it as much for that. But yeah, I do have a toothbrush that I could use. But I always forget. I always forget about that. I always use very limited materials, so I don't know why. Try not to get the white edges of the painting dirty here. One more. There we go, folks. The tape did its job. Oh, now it's looking like super warm. It's not that warm. <laughs> it's definitely not that warm in person. There we go. That's more of the colors. So I'll show you guys on the webcam real quickly. So if you guys look down here, you can see it's pretty similar to the photo. A little bit different, but yeah, not not very good lighting on this right now, unfortunately. But uh, there you go. Um. So yeah, there's the end, guys. I'm pretty happy with this one. It's very monochrome almost. You know, just orange and browns and stuff, and yellows, goldens. Um. But uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Philip. I appreciate it. And uh, Cubs win. Nathan, appreciate you guys. Jeremy. Yeah, it's it def it's definitely uh, different than than I expected. Definitely came out different than I expected. I didn't think I was gonna push it this much or spend this much time on it, but uh, I appreciate you guys watching. But be sure to check out my website. I forgot to say this in the middle. Be sure to check out my website. Uh, for drawings and other paintings I've done. You can see kind of the art that I usually do if you're new around here. I also have a support page where you can donate to me and all that kind of stuff. One thing I forgot to mention, you guys pay attention, pay attention right now. Uh, on Friday, I'm gonna be having a critique. So every, every live stream ending in zero, uh, I do critiques of work that you guys send in. So if anybody wants to send in work to me, you can send one piece of art, whether it's drawing, painting, pastel, colored pencil, whatever you guys want, uh, whatever you guys create um, that you'd like me to take a look at and see how you can improve or see what's working with it. You know, just get a different different perspective on your on your painting or your drawing. Send it in to the, the address here. Um, so yeah, finally got that little graphic made so now I can show that to you guys. I am having a live stream tomorrow. I'm gonna to be drawing an elephant, I believe, with pen and ink on tone paper. Should be pretty cool, hopefully. Um, so yeah. Thank you guys so much for, um, thank you guys for becoming a member. Everybody that became a member today and donated. Greatly appreciated. I, I hope the painting uh, uh, came out well for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I definitely, definitely was a challenge, definitely pushed myself to try something different and, uh, try a different kind of lighting effect and very dark painting, but it looks really good. It looks really good, especially if it was up on your wall, you know what I mean? Hanging up. It's definitely really cool, but, um, uh, don't be scared, Philip. Come on, man. Don't be a baby. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. It's all good. No worries. Whenever you're ready, dude, I'll be here, you know. But, um, yeah, that's true, Philip. You wait any longer, man. I keep getting more and more viewers. I don't know if everybody mentioned, is noticed. I'm getting like over 100 people watching the stream every day now. It used to be like 30 every day. And yesterday I had 150. Today I had like 100 and something, possibly. I can't remember what the, yeah, I had like 140 today, something like that. So, anyway, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll show you the painting one last time. There we go. But uh, like.
like I said, send in any art info at shaferfineart.com. Be sure to check out my website and uh, all that kind of stuff. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.